guys it's my hope that you're doing well welcome back to miss fountain channel and in this video or this session we're going to learn about dna extraction from challenging samples and that it's not all samples that use them the common process of extraction of dna some some samples require additional additional processes or additional chemicals the extraction of many samples encountered in the forensic lab including blood and shared epithelial cells can be carried out using methods like chelates 100 resin silica based dna extraction phenylchloroform based dna extraction and fta paper extraction methods and if there are however some samples or sample types that require variations on the basic techniques. These include semen, hair shafts, hard tissues, etc. And the first sample or sample type we're going to look at is semen. And semen is one of the most commonly encountered types of biological evidences. This can be found in cases of rape, etc. And the extraction of DNA from the spermatozoa is complicated by the structure of the spermatozoa itself. A spermatozoa has a nucleus which is in the head and it's covered by the acrosome. DNA is found within the head of the spermatozoa since that's where the nucleus is and is capped by the protective acrosome which which is rich in the amino acid system, a large number of disulfide bridges form between the cysteines in the acrosome. Therefore, proteinase K, which is a general proteinase, cannot break the disulfide bonds, and this reduces the efficiency of the extraction. This that's why it's a challenging sample. In this, therefore, we need to add the Dithiodrator, that is DTT, which is a reducing agent, which is going to break the disulfide bonds and also greatly increase the release of spermatozoa DNA. And another complication with the semen is that it's often recovered as a mixture of spermatozoa and epithelial cells. The acrosome can be advantageous in this case in that it's possible to perform differential lysis. The epithelial cells are broken down in mild lysis conditions and the spermatozoa can be effectively separated from the least epithelial cells. So for the case of semen, we add DTT to break the disulfide pods that are formed at the acrosome because there's, it's rich in amino acid system we have our second sample is hair shafts hair shafts that have been pulled out often possess a hair root that is rich in cellular material and DNA can be extracted using those of using those methods that we mentioned in the that is telex fta which is and plucked roots contain uh, about 0.5 video of DNA and hair that has been shed when it's in its resting telogen phase often contains no cellular material around the roots. The hair shafts are composed of keratin, trace metals, air, as well as pigment, that is cell fragments, including DNA that can get trapped in the matrix of the hair and provide enough DNA to produce a profile. However, hair is difficult to analyze and in many cases is only possible successfully to profile mitochondrial DNA, although the nuclear DNA can in some cases be recovered. The hair shaft, just as the spermatozoa acrosome, is rich in disulfide bridges and requires either mechanical grading or 
the addition of a reducing agent, a reducing agent like DTT, that is D-dithyotherato DTT that will break the disulfide bonds and allow protein SK to digest the protein, the hair protein and release any trapped nucleic acids. And once the once released, the DNA can be extracted using the sorting out procedure that is silica based or organic phenylchloroform based extraction. Alternative methods including the digestion of a buffer containing protein SK followed by direct PCR or even dissolving the hair shaft in sodium hydroxide after neutralization. And then the released DNA is concentrated using a using filter centrifugation. Since the hair shaft contains very low levels of DNA, it's prone to contamination. But unlike many other types of biological evidence with low levels of DNA, it's possible to clean the hair shaft prior to DNA extraction. And we have several methods have been used to clean the hair, including washing in milled detergents, water and ethanol, and also using milled lysis step in the same way that is used to differential extraction of semen. We have hard tissues. Following murderers or even terrorist attacks, it is it's desirable to, to group together body parts from individuals when fragmentation has occurred and it's ultimately to identify the disease. If the time between the death and recovery of the body is short, then the, mus the muscle tissues provide a rich source of DNA, which can be extracted using methods like gel eggs, salting out, etc. However, sometimes the soft tissues are displaying an advanced state of decomposition and they will not provide any DNA suitable for analysis. When the cell the structure breaks down during decomposition, Enzymes that degrade DNA are released and the, the DNA within the cell is rapidly digested. And this process is usually exaggerated by the action of colonizing bacteria and fungi. Osteo osteocytes are most commonly nucleated cells in the bone matrix. In, in the teeth, or in teeth, Odontoblasts within the dentine and fibroblasts in the in the cell rich zone of the pulp cavity provide a source of nucleated cells. So the hard tissues of the body, that is the bone and the teeth, provide a refuge for DNA. Even that in addition to the physical barriers, the Hydroxyapatite or the apatite mineral, which is a major component of the hard tissues, stabilizes the DNA, which becomes closely bound to the positively charged mineral, and this interaction limits the action of degrading enzymes. That's why in remains it's easy to find, okay, in decomposed remains it's easy to find DNA in these hard tissues of the body, that is the bone in the teeth. And find that hard tissues provide an advantage over other forms of biological material because they have a surface that can be cleaned to remove any contaminating DNA by using detergents to remove any soft tissue, followed by physical abrasion, soaking in sodium hypochlorite, that is bleach, and also exposure to strong UV light. After cleaning the bone or even the tooth, material is normally broken down into a powder by drilling or grinding under liquid nitrogen. The resulting material is decalcified using a 0.5M EDTA either before or at the same time as the cell laces. Then the organic phenochloroform and the silica binding extraction methods are used to extract DNA at that point. The process of DNA extraction from bone samples takes much longer than with the other type of samples. That's the only, the only disadvantage you have in extracting DNA from these 
type of tissues.